reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Salisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. Responsorial Psalm The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all His ways and holy in all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The second reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, 
And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. The Logic of Giving A Reflection of Pope Francis in one of his Angelus of 2015 This Sunday's Gospel presents the great sign of the multiplication of the loaves in the account of John the Evangelist. Jesus is on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and is surrounded by a multitude who were attracted by the signs which he did on those who were deceased. Acting in him is the merciful power of God who heals every evil of the body and spirit. But Jesus is not only the healer, he is also a teacher. Indeed, he goes up into the hills and sits with the typical attitude of a teacher when he teaches. He goes up to that natural pulpit created by his heavenly Father. At this point, Jesus, who fully understands what he is about to do, puts his disciples to the test. How can they feed all these people? Philip, one of the twelve, quickly calculates by taking up a collection, they might collect 200 denarii at most, which would not be enough to feed 5,000 people. The disciples reason in marketing terms, but Jesus substitutes the logic of buying with another logic, the logic of giving. It is here that Andrew, one of the apostles, the brother of Simon Peter presents a young lad who offers everything he has, five loaves and two fish. But of course, Andrew says they are nothing for that multitude. Jesus was actually expecting this. He orders the disciples to make the people sit down. Then he takes those loaves and those fish give thanks to the Father and distributes them. The crowd is struck by the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, but the gift Jesus offers is the fullness of life for a hungering mankind. Jesus satisfies not only material hunger, but the most profound one, the hunger for the meaning of life, the hunger for God. Before the suffering, loneliness, poverty, and difficulties of so many people, what can we ourselves do? Complaining doesn't resolve anything, but we can offer the little what we have, like the lad in the gospel. We surely have a few hours of time certain talents, some skills. Who among us doesn't have five loaves and two fish of his own? We all have them. If we are willing to place them in the Lord's hands, they will be enough to bring about a little more love, peace, justice, and especially joy in the world. How necessary joy is in the world. 
God is capable of multiplying our small acts of solidarity and allowing us and allowing us to share his gift. May our prayer sustain the common commitment that no one may lack the heavenly bread which gives eternal life and the basic necessities for a dignified life and may it affirm the logic of sharing and love. May the Virgin Mary accompany us with her maternal intercession. Let us pray. Jesus, my Savior, you teach us that the good fruits is produced from a good tree. Likewise, kindness flows not from the heart that is made of stone, but from a new heart that is given to us through your Spirit. Lord, teach us to be kind in heart so that love, grace, and charity flow like a river. Give us the generosity that reflects your own. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.